President, I rise today to honor the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. Last night in Minneapolis, the Philadelphia Eagles defeated the vaunted New England Patriots by a score of 41 to 33 in one of the most amazing Super Bowls ever, one of the most amazing NFL games ever. It was really an extraordinary night. And in so doing, the Eagles, of course, captured their first Super Bowl title ever and the franchise's first national championship since 1960. The Eagles' arguably improbable Super Bowl run came despite many serious injuries and a whole lot of doubts from naysayers and pundits and odd makers. The odd makers, by the way, had the Eagles as underdogs in every playoff game they played. But of course, they won every one of them. There's a team that was led by Doug Peterson, a coach who himself, entering the season, was often doubted and sometimes dismissed by the punditry and the talking heads. Well, not only did Coach Peterson make his critics look silly, but in winning the Super Bowl, he beat a man who's arguably considered one of the best coaches in NFL history. And he did it, Peterson did, by deploying one of the greatest offensive game plans I think the NFL has ever seen. The, the group of men that comprised the Eagles roster really embodied the silly city of Philadelphia. The brash and gritty, talented, never say die attitude. They were led by stalwarts like Malcolm Jenkins and Fletcher Cox, Carson Wentz and Alshon Jeffrey. The Eagles next man up mentality was really, really incredible to witness. You know, think about what they had to overcome. Over the course of the regular season, the Eagles lost a Hall of Fame left tackle, their amazing middle linebacker, arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound player in all of football, and they still steamrolled through a, to a 13-3 record in the regular season. And for all of that, maybe the greatest example of the next man up mentality in really, maybe in NFL history, was the way that Nick Foles took over for Carson Wentz at quarterback when Wentz was lost due to a, a serious injury late in the season. The fact is, Wentz was, I think, the leading candidate for league MVP at the time of his injury. I think he still should be uh, considered a leading candidate for MVP for the season. And the fact that Nick Foles was able to step in and guide the team, not just into the playoffs, not just through the playoffs, but all the way to the Super Bowl and to a Super Bowl victory against the New England Patriots. Uh, this is just the stuff that legends are made of. Mr. President, the Philadelphia Eagles are an historic franchise. Some of the best players in the history of the game have worn the green and white. Names like Van Brocklin and Bednarik and White and Dawkins come to mind. Well, this Super Bowl is also for all of these great players who put on the Eagles jersey over the years. I'll conclude, conclude with this. You know, if you, if you listen to sports radio in Philadelphia, most of eastern Pennsylvania, you learn the fat passion of the fan base is really extraordinary. And this is because the Eagles, in many ways, are more than a football team to its fans. The Eagles are a part of Pennsylvania culture. They're a part of the region's culture. And the mood of the region is affected every weekend that they're playing. So other cities have certainly celebrated Super Bowl victories in the past. Somebody gets to do that every year. But this Thursday afternoon in Philadelphia, get ready for a party like you have never seen. Because the most passionate fans in the country are finally getting a parade down Broad Street with the Lombardi Trophy. Go birds, fly, eagles, fly. And I yield the floor.